Hey guys, this is Jacob from. Um, it's like kind of blurry. It's uh, all the humidity out here. I'm just getting some sunrise right now. Watching that in the distance. Oh my god, it's blurry everywhere. Focus the camera every single place I can. Cool. Yep. So, hello, and here we are. Hey guys. It's Jacob, and today is a very fun day. I'm going to start doing this blog stuff again. Uh, we are going to, or I'm going to, get my blood drawn. That's going to be fun. But this is more than just a regular blood draw. I'm going to be getting the blood drawn, my DNA looked at, and we're going to look at the little proteins going around, the little uh, micro RNA, and how it all interacts with each other. So this is really good for people with SIRS, chronic inflammatory response syndrome or with Lyme disease, chronic Lyme disease as well. Um, this is ProGene DX, so let's go take a look at it and let's, let's head there now. Or head somewhere and we'll see how we get there. So here we go. So let's go over some words. I think it's uh, now time to do the dictionary of, oh, what a nice stretch. So I think it's now a good time to do some word dictionary defining things. So let's start with the word corpor be scene. Corpor be scene. Now if you know what that means, write in the description. And here's what it means. It means body conscious, or body awareness, or body mindness. So I don't know if I'm supposed to be fasting, but I fasted anyway, so. And I haven't taken supplements in a couple days as well, just to let my blood be as clean as possible. I just got my blood done. You can see the dot on my arm. And uh, we are gonna look at the ribosomes and how they interact with each other. Um, so apparently, oops. So apparently the stuff like Marcons in SIRS will cause problems with mitochondria being able to produce uh, their proteins, which allow for the electron chain transport. And then also it does the exact same thing with the ribosomes in our own uh, cytoplasm, cytoplasm. So we're not producing the proteins that we need to. Uh, or producing different proteins in the endoplasmic reticulum and putting stress on the whole cell and messing up the whole body. It's been raining off and on all day uh, and it's finally cleared up a little bit so I'm gonna head over to the beach and uh, get some sun. I've had elevated TGF beta 1 and elevated uh, MMP9 and low alpha MSH. So we're going to be working on that a little bit at the beach today, especially the alpha MSH. <laughs> But let's talk about natural sunscreens. So, today I took broccoli sprouts a little bit before I came to the beach. And sulforaphane protects against UV damage. Same thing with possibly uh, nightshades, as they can inhibit UV in uh, being absorbed. So that could be a problem with vitamin D. 
Uh, so that you might want to watch out for that, but you can also take things that are high in astaxanthin, like a lot of like pink foods, like things high in beta carotene, or so astaxanthin can be found in uh, salmons, things like that, salmon. And the reason why you don't want to use sunscreen is first of all, it blocks your ability to produce vitamin D. It, you don't know what kind of chemicals are in it, so they can be highly estrogenic. So they can bind to the estrogen receptors, and since your skin cells, skin is high, highly um, uh, absorbable of fat, as you can see, but you put hormones as on in creams, uh, fat absorbs into it very well. So you don't want phthalates or parabens or whatever they put in there to be absorbed into your body. That's just taking birth control. Uh, especially as a guy, you don't want to take it, or as a girl, but I don't want to take it, so I don't even take uh, any kind of sunscreens. And then, to get into the sun, you want to build up a tolerance, so you can have darker skin like this without having wrinkles or messed up like skin and things. Um, you still have to watch out for getting dry skin, and that's all about hydration, and I kind of forgot about that when I first started doing this, and so I started getting spots on my skin up here, um, which isn't vitiligo, and it's not eczema, it's just not hydrating properly. Um, so that should go away uh, in the next couple months as I work on my hydration while I go out into the sun. So, it's either that or a fungus, but I don't feel like testing for fungus myself. It's easy to test for vitiligo because you just get a woods lamp and you just put it on there. And eczema, you can tell, uh, because it gets all scaly and there's biomarkers for that, which I don't have. The app I'm using is called D-Minder, and it uses your GPS and timing and the position of the sun based on your location for you to calculate how much vitamin D you're synthesizing based on. Uh, also, it uh, bases it on your skin uh, tone. So if you have darker skin, it uh, takes a little bit longer, so it takes that into account as well. And also stores it and will predict your vitamin D levels. And you can also add in your, uh, your vitamin D supplementation if you take any, uh, and like a multivitamin or you just take it that way. I don't like taking hormones um, just in general, but right now it's calculating my vitamin D. It probably won't show up right now. But right now I'm getting 227 IUs per minute of vitamin D just from the sun. So I've been using that, and I've been using that as a general guideline to track my uh, alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone uh, because it's really important to producing this darkish color, um, which this darkish color protects you from skin damage, and it protects you, or that, and along with vitamin D can protect you from uh, skin damage. Vitamin D actually acts like a uh, antioxidant on the skin as well, not just being a hormone, but it's antioxidant on the skin protecting you from sun damage. As we talked about before, you can take astaxanthin and things like that, but just producing your own vitamin D helps with that. Uh, but with alpha MSH, it's a very potent anti-inflammatory. It's a vasodilator. Uh, if you were to take it uh, as a hormone, like uh, insufflate it, like spray it up your nose or inject it or just put, use it as cream. Uh, it can be used for, oh, lifeguard. It can be used as uh, for erections. So, yeah, it can make you very tan if you take it normally. If you take it as like Milano tan, it can make your hair jet black. Um, so it's something to look out for. Uh, if, if you are a bodybuilder, because bodybuilders will take that kind of stuff, uh, which I've never taken. So I didn't really have anything to wrap this video up with, so I'm just gonna go back to where I started, but I'm gonna watch the sunset this time. Out in the distance there, and it's very beautiful. So thanks guys for watching this vlog, and I'll be posting more soon i'm going to yosemite soon so hopefully i'll have some footage on that if not there on this vlog it'll be on my vimeo so check that out and thanks guys check out the new website mybiohack.com and stay beautiful